Hi, I'm Alex Paul, Marketing and Communications Director for Globetech, uh, power supply and power electronic solutions manufacturer. And uh, this is our third module in our multi-module series on basic power supply information. Uh, this power supply basics tutorial series is intended for laymen and business professionals who want to understand some of the basic concepts behind power systems but uh, don't need to understand the basic um, how to design with this is not a, a design series this is not an educational series at the end of this you're not going to be able to design a power supply however if you listen to these modules you will be able to sit in a conversation with engineers without feeling like feeling uh, completely uh, dumb because we do cover all the uh, terms and explain what those terms mean, the primary terms and uh, technologies in our series. So as I said, this is our third module and we're talking about DC to DC power. Our first module was on power supplies in general. Our second module was on uh, AC to DC power supplies and this module is on DC to DC power supplies. Now, a DC to DC power supply is also pretty straightforward. It takes DC, direct current, from uh, a source, be it a battery, a solar cell, uh, or an AC to DC converter, which is usually the case, and converts it into another DC current. That's because inside of a device there are multiple voltages. Um, no device operates on any one single voltage unless it's usually a single purpose device. Um, a uh, alarm clock, an electric alarm clock, will only have one voltage running into it unless there's some other technology inside of it like possibly a radio or a television or some other um, electronics. But usually if it's a multiple function device, there are going to be multiple voltages in it to run the subsystems in the device. And if it's a single purpose device, odds are it's just going to have one voltage. But somewhere along the line, uh, a DC voltage would had, would had to have been created to run that device. Very few products run on alternating current. Uh, the notable um, products that do it all involve uh, motors because uh, it is one of the better uh, operating methodologies for driving a motor is alternating current. In fact, we have uh, Nikolai Tesla to thank uh, for that because uh, he developed alternating current specifically initially to drive motors. But DC is how most people think of electricity. The current leaving the battery, going to the product or the device or the uh, use and going back, a simple uh, circle. The, the uh, ways of making that circle change uh, depending upon the product and uh, the application space. And I'll show you on the whiteboard in a second how that uh, can be dealt with. When you think of DC power distribution, it's good to remember that ground is a term that applies to the uh, return path for the current, but it doesn't actually have to be physically ground or earth. I mean, it's uh, called ground because obviously the earth is the ultimate ground, as it were, even electrically, uh, but you can have a temporary ground, or I shouldn't say temporary, a uh, provided ground that you have created for the circuit, um, a way to uh, manage your electrical current without actually running wires to and from everything in your system. A car is a good example of that type of basic DC power distribution. You've got your battery in your car with your minus and your plus, right? And you've got things in your car. You've got your starter motor. ST. You've got your radio. You've got your car computer. All right, you might have other peripherals. You've got headlights. All right, all of these things in the car need power from the battery. I mean, it's also being driven by an alternator which charges the system, but that is a bunch of stuff involved in automotive mechanics and we're not talking about the actual charging systems here. I'm just talking about DC distribution. So, the way they do it in an automobile is the body of the vehicle is considered the ground. So, if you'll notice, even if you look under the hood of your car, one of the battery terminals 
is going to be connected to the frame of the car, right there at the battery. And that means that the frame of the car now becomes the ground plane, becomes the ground of the electrical system. So the vehicle body is part of the system. So that means that every device goes to ground, or in other words, is connected in some way to the vehicle's body. And then that means that when the uh, battery sends its power out, it just has to send a single line to each of the products because the return is through the body of the vehicle. So that means that the current coming back literally travels through the body of the vehicle back to the battery. The same thing happens on a circuit board. Depending upon the type of circuit, depending upon the complexity of the circuit, they may run literal traces back and forth. Hot and cold lines. Or they may just make an area of the board ground and then run the devices on, that are attached to that part only then get power from an external line. But for basic DC, DC distribution, you're looking at having to have the current go out and then come back to the source, be it a battery, be it um, an AC to DC power supply. Because in many cases in a device, you've got the wall plug, which then feeds your AC to DC power supply, the block in your uh, power cable or the box that's attached to the wall, and then that converts the AC to DC, which then enters the device, which in the case of, say, your cell phone, it's through the uh, micro USB connector. If it's, uh, say, for example, a uh, piece of uh, stereo equipment or an electronic device, it may be a round connector of some type or some other kind of just straight uh, two uh, conductor connector for standard DC. Uh, you usually see them in all kinds of uh, devices, be they alarm clocks or clock radios or stereo equipment. There'll be some variation on a, a two conductor pin to take the power from the AC to DC converter to the inside of the box as it were because inside of most products run on DC, as I said. And so inside the box, there'll be a DC to DC converter, which then either takes that voltage and steps it down to, say, whatever voltage the product needs, and in most cases is going to divide it into multiple voltages. There's another approach where you would then send the same voltage out to multiple locations at the same voltage and then use another converter at each point. Power coming in, DC converter, and then what you would call a bus. So these would be all 12 volts. And then at each point, a smaller DC converter gives you your different use voltages. And let's say something just needs 12 volt all by itself. It doesn't have to run through an intermediate converter. This is called a distributed power architecture. I'm going to get into that in a later module when I talk about how these technologies are applied in a more aggressive stance. But it's needless to say, in each of these cases, the power is going out and it's coming back either through a ground plane or through a return trace put into the circuit board, and in some cases, a return wire depending on how much power is being used. The less power being used, the more you can get away with a simple trace in the circuit board. The more power being used, you have to get away with a thicker wire or a bus bar or something that actually carry 
that much energy because you need physical mass to carry high levels of energy just as you would need a big hose to carry a lot of water. So that's a basic description of uh, DC power distribution. The DC power comes in either through a battery or through a DC power source or something of that nature. Uh, and then it gets distributed through the product and usually changed to multiple intermediate voltages in the process. But the bottom line is, is that uh, DC is a DC DC converter takes um, a direct current at a certain voltage and obviously changes it to direct current at another voltage and primarily to deal with the various subsystems in a product. For example, in this uh, cell phone, the display takes a different voltage than the uh, radio frequency chips inside that take a different voltage than the uh, camera inside. Some products um, are migrating towards using the same general voltage to make it easier on the board, but inside of a modern electronic device you're going to usually have uh, several voltages and the DC converters are demanded to uh, make that conversion. That's why most DC-DC converters are actually pretty small devices because they're designed to go inside of the products and having the big part of the uh, voltage conversion, the AC to DC part done by a larger power supply external to the product. Now, um, this is also a DC-DC converter. This is a high voltage DC-DC converter. It um, does not generate a lot of current, but it would be akin to, say, a, a fire hose nozzle that, uh, that helps concentrate and create a much higher uh, pressure of water. So DC doesn't have to be a low voltage application. DC can be a very high voltage application. DC applications tend to be low current. Uh, there are industrial applications that require large numbers of a uh, large amount of uh, current, but in general, uh, current in consumer products and even your television set or something like that, which takes a, a large amount of power. Uh, most products run at less than a thousand watts of power. And those are products that usually involve a lot of AC, like your refrigerator or something along those lines. Uh, plasma television can run to about uh, 800 watts or so, uh, but those are kind of falling out because LCD, LED driven LCD, and we'll cover LED driving and solid state lighting driving in another module as well. But uh, most consumer products, as I was about to say, uh, that LED television set only pulls about 200 watts or so, 250 watts. So um, DC is pretty much a low power realm as far as like uh, power is concerned. But uh, there's plenty of uh, power inside of a high voltage DC device to shock anybody. So don't go just messing around in a product just because it's DC. The fact that it's DC does not mean that you're not going to get shocked. Um, DC is in some way safer, but uh, don't just make guesses about electricity just because uh, it's AC versus DC or DC to AC. I'm not trying to encourage you to get into any of this. That's why I'm showing you these things exposed. But um, the bottom line with uh, DC to DC converter is it requires the same types of uh, components that an AC to DC device requires. Uh, magnetic coils for uh, energy management, uh, resistors, capacitors, and other passives, which we'll cover in another module as well when we talk about power passives. But uh, as you can see from this one, you can see, plainly see the coil that's involved. Every power supply has to have a coil of some kind uh, the, um, mag to manage the uh, magnetic energy and to use the magnetic fields involved to help modulate the uh, power in either an inductor or a transformer or some other type of a, a coil uh, configuration. But the bottom line to remember with a DC-DC converter is that size doesn't matter, configuration doesn't matter. This. Uh, with a lots and lots and lots of pinouts is designed for uh, power uh, architecture where this device actually receives commands through the, some of these pins, uh, can send data through some of these pins because in a more modern power supply infrastructure, you're going to want to know what the temperature of those devices are at any one time. For uh, thermal management, you're going to want to know their status at any one time to make sure they're all performing properly. And so uh, digitally enabled DC to DC power supplies like this are actually almost uh, logic systems in their own right just to properly control the um, power in, in, the, in the system because some of these applications, for example, this is a military grade uh, power converter. If you're dropping a bomb on somebody from a few miles up and you want it to land within a, 
a couple dozen yards of the target, uh, the devices better be pretty accurate because any uh, drift in the current fed to these uh, sensors and devices also causes uh, anomalies in their performance. So uh, DC-DC converters, you'll find them in a lot of different um, quality levels, but the uh, key with uh, the more precise devices is you're going to find uh, money is no object DC-DC uh, DC converters on the inside because when it comes to uh, critical applications, you want to have the uh, cleanest, uh, most error-free power possible because the power going into the device, the cleaner it is, the cleaner the information within the device, and the cleaner the uh, logic performance it has, the cleaner the sensor performance it has, the cleaner the image performance it has. And that's why in the, in, in the case of some uh, like audio files, they'll put something just to clean up the power line going into their system. It applies a lot in uh, DC, and that's why you often see other things to mitigate noise, which I'll also cover when I talk about uh, passive uh, components in the power uh, realm. But uh, the bottom line is a DC to DC converter is an electronic device that takes the direct current from a source, be it, like I said, a battery or a uh, AC to DC converter, and converts it into the working voltages of uh, whatever system is required. Uh, the reason you see a lot of low voltage DC is obviously because batteries don't give off a lot of voltage. The average batter, uh, battery cell delivers about a volt and change, uh, which is right around why the volt is called a volt because the measurements were derived from initial old uh, battery cells. But we're going to cover batteries in our next module. So um, this is Alex Paul for Globetech, your power partner. If you want information about power supplies, please reach out to us, uh, www.globetech.com. Have a great day.